that feeling when you haven't showered in like three days and then you get all pretty for your video. <laughs> Hope you all had a fabulous New Year's Eve and New Year's Day and stuff like that. Ugh. Okay. So, I have a pile of books next to me. Physical books. Which is not my normal thing because books are heavy. I move a lot. There's not a reason for me to get physical books except I have a really hard time saying no to secondhand bookshops. I just... They're... I can't. So here is my haul video. First real big haul video, I guess. I I don't know what a few of these are about because I just sort of like read the back slash the cover was pretty and um, the people, well, the guys who were at the stalls at this farmer's market were like, Oh, if you really like, you know, fantasy, or if you really like this, you might like this. So, they were on recommendation. I don't know if it was just a sell, or if they were really good or not, but here we go. So, this first one is a Marcus Sedwick, The White Crow. We'll do that. It, I think it is the UK version, as it has a UK sticker on the back. So, the back reads... Two lives, two centuries apart, but they walked the same paths, lived in the same house, became obsessed by the same question. When city girl Rebecca steps into the quiet streets of Winterfold that relentlessly hot summer, her uneasy friendship and strange elfin... Ferith... Ferilith? Sets in motion stalking chains of, chains of events. Look, it was five bucks, and I couldn't say no. Next one is Traitor's Blade by Sebastian de Castel. Apparently it is one hell of a good book. The Great Coats, book one. So this is one of the series. Don't know if I'll get past the first one, but here's what the back says. The king is dead. The Great Coats have been disbanded, and Falco Valmond and fellow magistrates Kest and Rusty have been reduced to working as bodyguards for a nobleman who refuses to pay them. The uh, things could be worse. Their employer could be lying dead on the floor while three of them are forced to watch as the killer plants evidence framing them for the murder. Oh wait, that's exactly what's happening. A royal conspiracy is about to unfold in the most corrupt city in the world, and it could mean, t uh, and it could mean the ruin of everything. Oh, it's Falcio. Excuse me. Look, there's a reason why I don't normally read these things out loud. I am fucking dyslexic as hell. Ah, <sighs> if the trio want to unwind the conspiracy, save the innocents, and reunite the great coats. They'll have to do it with nothing but tattered coats on their backs and the swords in their hands, because these days every noble is a tyrant, every king is a thug, and the only thing you can trust is a traitor's blade. Again, this was like five bucks. I was caught in the rain in the secondhand bookshop. What do you expect me to do? Next is, you can see it's uh, been chewed up a little bit. It is The House of Chains by Steven Erickson, although... By the font, you wouldn't really know what the uh, the book title was. It looks like a historic epic, uh, or something like that. So we will see. In northern Genabacus, a raiding party of the savage tribal warriors descends from the mountains into the southern flatlands. Their intention is to wreak havoc among the despised lowlanders, but for one named Karsa Orlong, it marks the beginning of what will prove to be an extraordinary destiny. Some years later, in its aftermath of the Chain of Dogs... Wait... Wait, is this? I think this may be the second in a series. I thought I didn't do that. The new adjunct to the Empress has arrived in its last remaining Malazan stronghold in the Seven Cities. New to command, she must hone 12,000 soldiers, mostly raw recruits, but for a handful of veterans of Coltane's legendary march into a force capable of challenging the massed hordes of Shaikh's whirlwind who lie in wait at the heart of the Holy Desert. But waiting is never easy. The Seer's warlords are locked into in a power struggle that threatens the very soul of the rebellion, while Shaikh herself suffer, suffers, haunted by the knowledge of her nemesis, her own sister, Tavore. Tavor? I don't know how to pronounce these things. So, that's this. I may have accidentally stumbled on book two. Oh well. And last, which is super pretty, is the uh, Troy, Lord of the Silver Bow, by David Gemmel, Gemmel, but it, it's super pretty, and 
it has to do with Troy and like Greek legends and stuff like that, which I am very much fond of. In The Lord of the Silver Bow, the first in an epic trilogy, David Gemmel, 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 combines vivid characterization with a wealth of historical detail in a compelling, unputdownable novel of love and hatred, ambition and rivalry, peace and war. Unputdownable is a word now. That is a thing. Three lives will change the destiny of nations. Helicon? Helicon? I'm going to say Helicon. Helicon, the prince of Dardania, haunted by a sacred and traumatic childhood. The priestess of Andromache? Andromache? And Dramash? The priestess Andromache, whose fiery spirit and fierce independence threatens the might of kings, and the legendary warrior Argurius, cloaked in loneliness and driven only by thoughts of revenge. In Troy, they find a city torn apart by destructive rivalries, a maelstrom of jealousy, deceit, <laughs> deceit and murderous treachery, and beyond its fabled walls, blood hungry enemies eye its riches and plot its downfall. In a time of bravery and betrayal, the time of bloodshed and fear, it is a time for heroes. Now, those are the new ones that I just bought locally because, again, I was stuck in the rain, like, pouring. I was wicked up to my frickin' knees in my jeans, pouring rain. Uh, and I was like, oh, it's a, it's a bookshop. Oh, it's a secondhand bookshop. And I bought things even though I said I was not going to. However, I do have a second haul from a different bookstore, which is Better World Books. If you are unfamiliar with Better World Books, for whatever reason, uh, I really highly recommend going and checking them out. They're kind of like a charity organization, so they will either donate a book one for one, one you purchase, they'll uh, donate a book to a library somewhere around the world, or they will just straight up donate money to libraries in need. So honestly, I never feel bad about purchasing books from there. It might take a while to get your books because they come from all over the world and uh, they don't exactly regulate their shipments. But at the same time, you're guaranteed to get their books. They always send you a really nice, like, friendly email. And uh, they they always try to make sure that you've gotten your books as well. I've never had a problem with them um, until now, I guess. I, I actually repurchased a book that I've pretty much torn to shreds and is back in the United States, and that is Shattered Mirror. I've mentioned this before. Um, but the problem is, is that this was not the cover I wanted. I specifically looked for a hardcover in the older the older art that I had and I grew up with and that I really enjoyed. But yeah, this this is not the cover that I, I wanted. I have the book. I can read it. It has definitely seen usage in a library somewhere. But yeah, I, I just, I, I, want, I wanted the cover. So I, I own the book. I'm happy it's here with me. I get to, honestly, I think I will reread it. It's one of the few things that I have fond memories of and I don't remember, you know, if it was actually good or if I was just reading it with rose-colored glasses, so we'll see about that. Next is a book that I actually have never owned before, but I have read or I've listened to an audiobook, and that is The Night Circus. Now this one's super pretty. Look, look, look at that hollow shine. I love it. And you can also see that this is, um, I'll need to fix this at some point. Was this the UK version? Oh no, this is US. So I actually bought a limited edition UK cover as well. So that one should be on its way, but I have this one in the meantime to tide me over. I absolutely loved this book. Um, honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, this probably should have made my top 10 list because I, I think it's because I didn't have the audiobook on Audible with me and I didn't have a physical copy. It just, it like, I forgot about it somehow. But yeah, this is, this is definitely, if it's not actually in my top 10, this is definitely an honorable mention because it was magic. I couldn't stop listening to it. I stayed up, you know, literally just looking at the ceiling in bed trying to listen to the rest of this book. So definitely I'm excited about this one. Next one is one that does not have a cover. It, it's plain, but it is by Brian Froud. And if you don't know who Brian Froud is, um, he and his wife Wendy were the artists and they helped create the world of Dark Crystal. If you are familiar with that, there's a Netflix series coming out in the near-ish future someday. I don't know. But they are really into art and fairies and 
Let, let's let's find some things like this dude. He's so cute, and Brian Fraud has a very particular art style that I am quite enthralled with. Honestly, I may actually own this book. Yeah, I think maybe back in, uh, in the U.S., but I didn't have a hardcover. And frankly, I really enjoy his work, so I don't mind, again, purchasing another copy. Um, but it is Good Fairies and Bad Fairies so by Brian Froud. So this is, it's like, there's more than just art. And it's not just stories, it's like, it's like, a, it's like a field guide for fairies. I think that's a good way to put it. And the last one that I'm really excited about because... I saw it, it was brand new, and it was on Better World Books, and I couldn't stand it. Is this? It's so beautiful. Like, I, on, like, you can see, I haven't taken it out of the plastic yet, but, yeah. I'm so, I'm so happy about this, um, because I listened to the audiobooks, I just, I wanted to have the physical copies, um, and I don't even care that it will take me a long time to actually break these open. I, I just want them in mint condition for whenever it is that I actually settle down and in a real home and stop moving around like a maniac. And book haul for Audible. So uh, even though I am not a fan of books by this author, from because I was given the books, like the physical books, as a gift, but we like to talk about these books, so I bought two more of the um, Hidden Legacy romance novels by Ilona Andrews, um, and that is Wildfire and Diamond Fire. I'm in the middle of Wildfire, which actually isn't as terrible as the other ones. It's getting better. It's not good, but it's getting better. Oh, I finally got the Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue because it was half off. So I had to buy it, of course. Um, also, The Witches of New York, a novel, which sounded really kind of awesome. So we'll see about that. Um, I thought I bought something else. I may have actually bought The Hate You Give because that one's right at the top of my list. So I think I bought I bought those three uh, with the extra credits that I purchased for Christmas. Now to start the wrap up portion of my thing, uh, these are the books that I've read or that I finished reading in December and we'll sort of loosely give them stars. First off, of course, I was so excited about this one, which was Tim Curry's version reading of A Christmas Carol, and I would definitely give that five stars just because it's Tim Curry and he did an excellent job of reading it. As far as the story goes, like it's, I feel like it's hard for me to judge a classic because it's a story that you know pretty much all of us know or have seen in some way, shape, or form. So I would give it a four because it is, it does have a good message, it does have a good turn. There are, you know, it it's, fits perfectly in a five-act structure. And, like, some of the things that a lot of the other versions of A Christmas Carol gloss over are very poignant. I did not like how every once in a while there was kind of a, a second person jump. It almost felt like someone was telling us this story, but it just sort of jumped out at you at certain points where the author or the narrator, whoever's telling, was sort of like giving their opinion about it. So I was not a fan of that. I know that it used to be much more common. I think there's a reason why it's not common anymore. We'll leave it at that. I also finished Sharp Objects. Oh my god. It was so good. I can't, I can't even explain or describe. It was just fucking bonkers. <laughs> Gathering thoughts. I knew who the murderer was by like, like at, at least a quarter of the way through the book, I knew who the murderer was. Um, and then there was a twist and then I wasn't sure. And then there was another twist. And then I'm like, oh my God, this makes so much sense. Why did I not see this before? Because it was and it wasn't, but it, 
wasn't and why and oh my god it was great it does talk about mental health a bit perhaps not in a good light um so i i could i'm definitely gonna say that there are some trigger warnings on this actually there's a bunch of trigger warnings for this there's trigger warnings for rape murder uh self-harm drug abuse but it does deal with it in a very raw way like there there's a lot to going on to this but if if you those things don't bother you this is a fantastic piece i'm actually really excited to see how the hbo show holds up and if honestly it, if one is better than the other perhaps um i can see why a the film version would do really well. Um, I can also see why it could fail in the wake of how this book is written. Two hours later. Um, I actually DNF'd uh, The Christmas Hirelings because I was trying and man, Richard Armitage, you are, your voice is smooth and wonderful, but honestly, at the end of the day, it was not enough to keep me going. So The Christmas Hireling starts off with uh, a very wealthy gentleman and his very entertaining and but wealthy friend and possibly his sister? I honestly couldn't keep up with all the names and whatnot. It's, it's coming to Christmas time and they have this wonderful conversation and they come to the conclusion that the only reason why other households still have that sort of Christmassy spirit, keeping up with the with the spirit of the holiday is for the children, which they have none of. So the friend decides, you know, why don't we hire children for the day and then have a Christmassy spirit go on? And that was like, okay, I can sort of get on board with this weird nonsense, but you know, we'll we'll see what the message is at the end. And then it goes on for like an hour or two, possibly, about the rich gentleman and how he had two daughters and literally their entire freaking life story before we actually get to the point where the kids show up, like the new hire the hirelings show up for Christmas Day. And at that point, I didn't care anymore. Uh, I finished Children of Blood and Bone. I was very happy with this. I've I've said this in other videos that the audiobook smoothed over, I think, a lot of the plot points and whatever that I didn't like. There were certain points where I'm just like, Inan, but no, but Inan, but no, but ah! I did have problems with the romance. I had some of I had a little bit of the problems of how they went about this, but ultimately I thought it was a fantastic story. It dealt with a pantheon of gods and magic that we're just not used to in the Western world. And the, like, Zaley was such a compelling character. I was just, I was there for her and all of her shit that she went through. I'm, I've already pre-ordered the next book. I'm very excited to hear and listen and see where this goes. So I hope that there is much more goodness in the future. I also finished Crooked Kingdom, which um, five stars, 10 out of five stars, 100 out of five stars. Like I just, I can't sing the praises high enough. I didn't think that it was gonna be a good second book because I, I honestly, I, I'm one of those people who are of the opinion that the sequel or the second in in a series is usually not as good as the first. I was proven wrong. Happily so. I'm so excited for King of Scars. Yeah, that was a really good way for me to end December was with Crooked Kingdom. I didn't ball crying, like ball out crying because I had I had the moment spoiled for me, but I was still like book hungover the next day. And I guess that's a wrap up for the January book haul slash December wrap up video that I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do these types of things from now on because uh, I don't know. I think that they get boring when you just do one and one. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It would really help me a lot out. 
Um, and also hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already, because I, one of my goals for 2019 is to hit 500 subscribers and subscribes always help me out. Leave a comment below if you've heard of any of the ones that I got from the secondhand bookshop, because I, I have not looked these up yet on Goodreads or anything, but I have a feeling that I'm either going to be very excited or very disappointed in them. I'm, I'm not sure at this point yet. Alright, thanks so much for watching, and I guess I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye!